to start recording the computer. <laughs> so I'm going to pass this recording for those that were not able to be here today. Um, but yeah, so we are a part of the National Angel Capital Organization as members of NACO. Uh, we are also part of the Startup Visa program. We're one of the companies designated uh, for that specific program. I'm going to talk about that too, because I imagine some of you may have questions uh, about that specific program. But okay, uh, I always love to uh, start these presentations navigating our website. And uh, I don't normally take too long. Uh, this presentation for me takes 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, so you can, again, ask questions whenever you uh, need to ask them. Uh, so first of all, uh, you know, we have program for uh, startups, international startups. And we recently are adding programs also for Canadian startups. Uh, these programs are going to be released in, the, um, a, in a few weeks, actually, when we have one of our events. Uh, but I'm going to be talking today about the programs we have for international startups and um, some other programs that, that we have available uh, in our uh, community. So we are a community, uh, most of us are newcomers. Uh, so we are very focused uh, initially in the Latin American markets. I have to say in the last, uh, I will say two years, uh, we have been receiving international startups from all over the world not just from Latin America. So we have been, uh, you know, seeing more applications uh, from uh, Pakistan, India, China, some other emerging markets. So it's important for you to know that, uh, you know, we are not just focused in Latin America, though our core business has been always uh, kind of Latin America, and that's why the name, Latin Startups. Uh, so as part of our programs, uh, do we, we have uh, programs for startups. We have programs for uh, corporate um, type of uh, companies. And we have another program that is called Elevate Talent that I'm going to touch base uh, just after uh, we talk about all these. Um, we are also hiring uh, people, uh, you know, you will, you will find all about, you know, new hiring or volunteering positions in this link and about apps in, uh, in jobs in, in case that you're interested uh, for that part. Uh, but okay, uh, sorry, I came to the about us part, so I'm going to come back to the uh, programs part so I can talk about that part. Uh, so here we are, programs. So, okay, so for the programs uh, we have, for the startup programs, we have three uh, main programs, and uh, I'm going to try to be as specific as possible in these programs. Uh, because these programs are designed for international startups. Many startups are actually uh, coming to us in order to become a part of the startup visa program. That's most of the goal uh, for the startups. So from the beginning uh, of the program, we always have the same requirements. What are those requirements for these programs? If you go for the market validation program, for example, which is the first phase of the program, Startups are required, uh, you know, to have uh, a, um, basically technology company with intellectual property. This is very important uh, for us to know that you own your own code or you actually, if you are working in a product, you have somehow started uh, your patent process or you will start a strategy in IP. So uh, this is, um, you know, one of the requirements for a startup visa program. And this is why for us it's very important from the beginning when we select the companies to look at this uh, specific criteria. Uh, we need to have companies that are financially stable because expanding to Canada is very difficult. And, uh, and you know, expanding to any other country is very difficult. Uh, you have to have enough budget, uh, you have to have enough time uh, to actually go through the process. Uh, so this is why financial stability is important for us. Of course, as any other incubator and accelerator, we are looking for coachable teams, people that are open minds and they are willing to change whatever is needed in order to have a good success landing uh, process into Canada and North America in general. Uh, of course, if they are, uh, you know, um, applying for the program, we are assuming that they are willing to relocate in Canada. And we have different partners in Canada. It doesn't have to be in Toronto, uh, although most of our companies are in Toronto. 
uh, but it, it could be in some other places that also provide very good support uh, for our startups and community. Uh, all co-founders uh, need to have uh, um, an English uh, level, you know, uh, proficiency level. And you can see with me, I have a broken English. It doesn't have to be like a uh, perfect uh, type of English, but it's, it needs to be enough to communicate with our mentors and with people in a successful way for business. Um, so this is the criteria just for the first level. And uh, this is very important for us. Now, the way that we call it a startup program, and uh, this is confusing for some people because sometimes people think that uh, they can actually apply with ideas. We don't work with people with ideas because um, it's, that's too early stage for an expansion process. We work with people that already have at least an MVP uh, or have some local traction in their own countries. Uh, and again, this is important because of the financial stability of the company. Either way, you have received some kind of investment, you have bootstrapped, or uh, you, know, you have your own funding to start the expansion of your business. Um, so it called a startup because, you know, um, most of our startups actually scale ups, but it's called startups because in general, you are going to be perceived as a new company in Canada. No matter what, no matter if you have 10, $30 million uh, you know, revenue in your country, mm -hmm. you are going to be perceived as new one in this country. So that's why we call it a startup. And also because most of the companies are maybe not, we just have one probably that was close to unicorn level, uh, but most of the companies are not, uh, you know, in unicorn, in unicorn level. Um, so this is why, you know, the name. Uh, I will ask you all to please, uh, you know, mute yourself uh, just while I'm talking, so I don't have any back noise. Uh, okay. So the first program is the market validation program. And this is a program for startups that have not yet started an insertion in the North American market. They don't have customers. They don't have a corporation. They are just learning on how to establish a business here and how to start getting traction. So Bain said that 95% of the cases, I, I just have seen one or two cases, uh, as a reference that have been in uh, probably entering in, in phase two. And sometimes, you know, we have startups that they start market validation, they stop and they continue six months uh, after uh, in, in phase two. But other than that, the main case is that most of the startups will start in market validation. Ideally for us, market validation is a one month program. And in this uh, market validation, what we want to do is the, all the due diligence that is necessary to make sure that you are making a good move uh, to Canada and that this is the right path for your company. So we are you know, looking at the legal framework of the company. We are looking at the immigration process. Uh, we are looking at uh, you know, the marketing strategies that are put in place, the sales strategies, networking, all that you need to know uh, if you know your customer here, you know, making sure you're, uh, you know, also your competitors and how you are tackling uh, those competitors, uh, you know, in the future when you are est establishing your company here. This uh, market validation part is extremely critical for our company. Uh, it's extremely critical for us to uh, realize if you actually have a good positive uh, environment to bring your company here. And I have to say many times, you know, companies uh, decide after market validation that this is not the right time, that they need to work a little bit more in their own businesses in order to bring the company to North America. And some other times they are totally ready uh, to continue working in, in bringing the company here. Uh, this program actually saves a lot of time and money for people that sometimes wants to do this by themselves. And then, you know, I personally have seen uh, companies taking one or two years to actually uh, realize that this was not the right time or was not the right move for them. So this is a one month, ideally, again, uh, market validation program. Uh, the reason why I'm saying ideally is because uh, it may happen that some of the companies require more time to validate. Uh, if that's the case, they always can extend the program uh, for one month more. Uh, we are not, uh, you know, like 
uh, pushing the company to do that part, but this is totally a personal business decision from the companies. And yes, the cost of the program. So all startups pay for the program. This is the cost of the program here reflected. This is up to five co-founders. Uh, so the cost of the program is per company. This is not per person. And this is for one month of the program. We are a nonprofit corporation. As a nonprofit corporation, we don't take equity over the startups. But uh, by paying with the program, you know, you're paying for salaries. Uh, you're paying also uh, for, uh, you know, space and people that are working in the program. So basically, we redistribute all the money into the same community. Uh, now, uh, you know, we are expecting by the end of this uh, specific program, people are going to be able uh, to understand uh, the path that they require in order to come to Canada and what are the next steps and milestones that uh, they need to uh, have in order to have a successful landing again. So this is the market validation program. Second program after market validation is the market entry. Uh, companies that enter into market entries because they already have, again, validated the most basic assumptions of their business. But uh, in this part, we are kind of doing a further validation. That, what that means is that, uh, you know, companies are coming and that we are kind of like validating with customers, uh, making sure that they are going to pay for the price or they are actually interested in the product or service that you are bringing here. Um, so for that reason, we work in focus groups. Uh, you know, we work uh, in, in more in sales strategies and marketing strategies and all that. Uh, we are identifying grants for the companies. Uh, we're identifying other aspects for you to make sure that this is again, the right step. So by this step, uh, you know, in this step, we are actually um, uh, thinking that the companies are, uh, are in good shape to incorporate at the end of the program. We never ask companies to incorporate in the phase one or at the initial stage of phase two because uh, you know, incorporation requires a lot of uh, efforts, let's say, uh, to make sure that you are doing the right structure for your program. Sometimes people are thinking in the immigration process, how this is going to affect the structure, for example, uh, when you are entering into start a visa program. And uh, because of that reason, uh, you know, we are not rushing up into incorporating the company just because. Um, this is an important note that I'm going to make here is that the startup visa program for us is a good tool that we use for good companies, uh, companies that can uh, grow global, that we believe that they have a great opportunity and that we can prove to the government that they are in good shape to grow that fast. Uh, for us, we are not an immigration firm, so we are not doing this for the sake of you to come to Canada as an immigrant. Uh, we are doing this on the vision of, uh, you know, having a good business in technology in the country that will affect uh, several other uh, places, meaning that, that you can actually grow to several other countries with your company, establishing the company here. So uh, this market entry program for us, ideally, the minimum time that uh, companies will spend will be two months. Again, the price is the same, it's uh, $2,500 uh, per month. And again, uh, the price, uh, sometimes I get the question, you know, why the price is in US dollars is because most of the companies for sure are outside of Canada, the transaction makes easy in the US dollars. Uh, and again, we don't take equity for, for that part. Uh, before COVID-19, uh, the two programs used to be in person. Uh, we are doing everything, of course, right now online. Uh, we are hoping that, you know, by the end of this year, the government may take an approach in how they are going to start opening borders and uh, maybe allowing some business people to enter to the country. But as we are no government and we don't control the situation of the pandemic or the situation of the pandemic in other countries, we cannot guarantee that people can come to our programs in person. Even if we give a, you know, an invitation letter to become a part you know, of the programs as a business visitor, uh, we still have to go with the regulations that the government has right now. and We have no control over that part. Uh, so uh, by the end of the program, we are expecting that the companies are going to be eligible for a visa program. So they are in good shape 
to uh, you know, present to the board of directors of LATAM startups. In that case, uh, you know, our board of directors will evaluate uh, you know, every company uh, through an interview. Uh, the companies will present uh, to, uh, to them and then the, the board of directors will decide if the companies uh, you know, are actually good uh, for the program. Most of the time we have the companies approved. We always have one or two that may not get approved right away and they need to work maybe a little bit more into the results that they are putting together. Uh, there are different reasons why, it happen, why that happens. Uh, it may be a problem in the team, it may be a problem in the budget, and it may be a, you know, a, pro, a problem in the product that they are launching. Um, there are several reasons why you know, a board of directors may decline a, an application, but that doesn't mean that you know, companies are not going to be allowed to repitch again uh, to the board of directors they do. Uh, they normally place recommendations uh, on uh, you know, what they need to work on in order to have a strong um, pitch. Now, um, you will ask yourself why we have to go through all this process, uh, you know, why we have to get the approval from the board of directors and this and that. Uh, we do all this because at the end of the day, if you are bringing your company here, uh, you know, we are supporting your company. We are saying to the government that you have a good company. We need to make sure that you, you actually are in good shape. We can give the letter of support to companies and the government still can reject your case. So the letter of support that doesn't, doesn't mean that you are going to get your permanent residence right away. Uh, that that means is that you, know, you have a supporting organization that is saying to the government, yes, we trust uh, this company and we trust that uh, you know, the company will do well. Uh, but that's just one of four requirements for you guys if you are aiming for a startup visa program. Uh, so talking about a startup visa program, once you get, get approved uh, for, for this uh, specific program, uh, one of the most common questions uh, we get is uh, when we get the letter of support. Normally, when you get approved for the program, the letter of support comes immediately. Uh, you know, we start the program uh, because the letter of support uh, is good for six months. And then, uh, you know, uh, we want to start with the legal process as soon as possible. The letter of support will give you opportunity to get a work permit for your company and will give you also opportunity uh, to uh, actually, um, you know, come to the country. You, you can actually travel to the country uh, with a work permit. And uh, that has happened with the other startups, even uh, under the situation of the pandemic. So with the work permit, you are waiting at the same time uh, for your uh, permanent residence. Uh, so with the work permit, what is allowing you is to work in your company into open uh, bank accounts, do the other stuff that you need to do while you are waiting for uh, your permanent residence. Another common question I get uh, you know, for this part of the program is how long it takes the permanent residence. Very unexpected under the uh, pandemic situation. Uh, I had a company that got it in three months after applying for the process. I got another company that uh, waited 18 months. Uh, so it depends, uh, you know, the company that got in three months was before the pandemic, the company that got it 18 months was just about to, uh, you know, they, they submitted the application November 2019, so it was very short uh, before the pandemic started. Um, so there is a compilation of files, but still it seems like it's the fastest process to get a permanent residence uh, for uh, people that own a company and they want to actually uh, do this part of the uh, of their business. So uh, in the acceleration process for us, uh, you know, again, looking at the business perspective uh, from uh, from our side, uh, of course, we are concerned about your legal uh, stability in, in the country. So that's why startup visa is important for us. Uh, but also we are coaching the companies in how to acquire talent in the country, uh, get some grants and uh, in the in the market meeting investors, uh, you know, uh, get, get to uh, do better your investment pitch, uh, you know, do some, some events for your company. And we are starting, uh, starting to track your sales growth in this stage. Uh, so we are, you know, looking at the company evaluation, uh, evaluation and that then, you know, some other stuff that is required for your company to grow in here. 
This program is for six months. Uh, so it has a cost related that is uh, for the five co-founders. Again, this is not per co-founder, this is per company. And we have cohorts uh, for this part. The other two programs, they are not coming in cohorts necessarily. They are coming as a, you know, rolling basis. And now we have open applications for market validation program, uh, which is the first phase. And that is for the month of September. And that's the, uh, the last program that we are going to have this year because that group, you know, the, the one that comes in September will finish up with the Stata Visa in December, uh, you know, entering Stata Visa by the time. So it's not possible for those, for example, trying to enter in October and November that that will happen that the same year, this year. So that's why the last group is in September. Uh, hopefully applications will be closing around uh, August 20th. Uh, you know, so if you have a case, uh, you should just uh, submit your application. Uh, you go to the um, application process, basically, uh, you know, when you go to the programs, sorry, I'm going to go, um, going to go here again to the programs and then If you go to the startup programs, market validation, which is the one that we are receiving in um, September, you will find there the uh, application link. You also find it at the beginning of the page, you know, when you go to latamstartups.org, just in the home page, you will find the application link. Uh, so I will open for questions right now in case uh, somebody has questions about our startup programs. Anyone? Quick, uh, quick question. Thanks so much for that. Uh, is it Miriam? Yeah, this is Miriam. Hi. Hi. Um, with regards to uh, phase, so phase one and phase two, they're not startup visa, right? So you, you go through phase one and you go through phase two. And then when you're ready to go into phase three, that's when you apply for startup visa. Am I right? That's right. That's right. Oh, okay. And a uh, question in terms of a physical space, like after COVID, do you guys have physical space and where is it? We do. We do. It's actually it's a very nice, cool space. Thank you for asking that question. Uh, uh, we are embedded in the uh, Ontario Center of Innovation, uh, which is, a go is, is an office from the government of Ontario. If you, if you go to the Innovation Center, you will find the pictures here. Uh, we are still in the same place. Uh, and we have been able to go to the office at least once a week. So our startups are coming anytime they they can, you know, enter to uh, to the office. The office has been actually open for the whole pandemic. Um, every single startup uh, is, uh, you know, uh, for if if you're a co-founder, you're basically essential worker for your own business. So it's up to you if you want to go and use the office. Uh, but yeah, this is this is our office. There, there you have the pictures, and uh, many many people that enter into our programs actually use the address to incorporate in Canada. Yeah, I have another question here. But Sam, do you have a question? I think it was yes, Maria. Yeah, Maria. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yes, that, yeah. sorry. So no problem, I have. I just have two questions. Yeah. What do you think of uh, like applying with one founder? Does it work? My second question, what's the success rate to be approved from the board of directors? Yeah, those are good questions. We have solo entrepreneurs in our programs. Uh, and sometimes what they do is when they enter to the program, they are kind of building up uh, teams uh, in phase one and phase two. Uh, so that doesn't mean that you have to incorporate a, a necessary co-founder, but, uh, you know, it will be difficult to just see a global type of company with one co-founder. And usually you have more than one co-founder. So we will encourage you if you uh, get to enter to any of the programs to actually build, build up team. Uh, now, in regards of uh, which percent get approved. So usually, uh, let's say we have a group in phase one. Phase one at the end, we have a diag diagnosis of the company. So companies that come to, uh, you know, to that diag diagnosis, sometimes they, uh, they, they actually de decide by themselves if they want to enter or not in the second stage. It's very weird that we will tell them, uh, you know, uh, you cannot enter, you can enter uh, because normally companies realize this is a good time or not. Uh, so 
usually in our cases in between 50 to 60 percent that companies will continue in phase two and from that percent you know from uh, the companies that are in phase two then about 90 percent get approved from the board of directors uh, now I, I have a mirror with a question hey hey Miriam how are you good yeah how are you okay Good, thank you very much. So um, just a quick one. We are based in Dubai, uh, we are a marketing company and we do have our existing business in, in, in corporate in Dubai, but we are having an existing clientele in the US and um, we are growing there. Mm -hmm. Now, question for you, they've got two questions. One, if we have a growing business, do we still need to, for the mature startups, do we still need to go with the market validation where we already have a good uh, profile of the actual clients? Um, and question number two would be, um, if if the moment we get a letter of support, do all founders has to fly back in or I can leave two founders for a moment, like for about a month or two, and I can come there, set up things because I really don't want to affect our current operations. If that of course. makes sense. I know, and those those are good questions, Amir. Thank you so much. Uh, so the first question uh, about, uh, you know, if you have already operations in the US, this is very important for us. So you may uh, be able to enter actually to market entry, uh, which is phase two. OK, we still need okay. to do some validation. So it's uh, it's impossible that you are going to enter immediately to start a visa just without to enter in one of the phases because we need to do but, our but own we can, due diligence. But but we can skip phase one because we are we are already post revenue and have an active business it's with lots of clients in the us already it may be the case it may be the case Maybe. it depends of uh, you know uh, when you put your case in the application form you have to put a strong case on why you are sure. you know uh, able to be admitted in phase uh, in phase two okay uh, is gotcha. uh, and again, uh, it's not it's not impossible. It's just we need to make sure that you have done all the right steps from the beginning. Now, um, for your second question about the co-founders, this is a very common question as well. Uh, we uh, get uh, startups that sometimes they get up to five co-founders, and sometimes we get one or two that are coming to the country while the others are waiting uh, in their home countries for the permanent residence. So. There you have a classification in the uh, startup visa letter, uh, who is essential and who isn't. So you may have the case that all the co-founders are applying for work permits or just some of them are applying for a work permit mm -hmm. and the others don't require to have work permit. They don't require to fly right away. Okay. Just for, uh, just for, just for, sorry to interrupt you, but just for clarification, yeah. all, we are four co-founders. Everyone has to fly in, but I need to manage the logistics of operations. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to affect my current operation that's mm -hmm. happening in the US. Yeah. I just want like a two months gap. So first I go come to Canada, set up everything. And then post two months, the remaining co-founder will come and join me. Yeah. So I have a smooth operations. Yeah, no, there is no problem on that. When you have work permits for everyone, they can come and go as they wish. Uh, basically, gotcha. you know, so uh, one thing is when you get the permanent residence and then, you know, they, I, I believe they give you six months to move. Uh, but other than that is like the work permit allows you to be traveling back and forth uh, whenever it is required for you to, to do that. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay, thank Thanks. you. Uh, if anyone has any other questions, just please raise your hand or open your mic and then I will answer the question. Uh, so moving forward, we actually have, uh, you know, another program, which is the uh, corporate program. The corporate program, you will find it uh, here. This is the second program that we have, and it's under a uh, global hub. So if you click on the corporate program, we'll go to this part. And basically the corporate program was designed uh, for people that, uh, you know, uh, have corporations. They want to set up a second corporation in, in North America, but they are not requiring to move to Canada. Like as, as a person, they don't need to be permanent residents or anything like that. They just need to have a second corporation and they just need to have, for example, a staff. They need an office space. They need to consult services that usually is in, in, in terms of accounting and, you know, legal structure. 
um, uh, sometimes immigration for some of the uh, staff that they may have. And then, uh, you know, they will need support in marketing strategy, connections, some other things. So this program has a cost, again, it's, it's the same cost as the other programs, $2,500 per month. This is a minimum commitment of three months because we are working this as per project. Uh, so you see here, we have some of the corporations and actually what good as stuff is that these corporations came uh, during the pandemic in 2020. Uh, Godelius in particular, they started a, in uh, January 2020 with the goal of uh, getting a partnership with a, a mining company in Canada. And you can imagine that's extremely difficult. Mining sector is very traditional, uh, but we still did it. Uh, so, uh, you know, at the end of the 2020, they got the partnership. They are very happy right now with a, with a contract and a pilot project that they are starting. And same thing happened with Grupo Seara. Uh, this company also came from Mexico. Uh, they have a good uh, revenue in Mexico as well, growing very fast. And they uh, came here in order to improve technology so they become more competitive in Latin America. And these, uh, these guys also got a very good contact through the program. And they are now, you know, in different programs, different oil programs as a Canadian corporation. They are doing really, really well. So we are super happy about the two uh, companies in corporate program. This is a very customized program. So it will depend on the goal of the companies, you know, what exactly are their needs in, in order to uh, become a part of the corporate program. Uh, so this is this is a program that we actually launched it during the pandemic. We we pre-launched it in 2019 without to know the pandemic, but we did it because we had a lot of companies that were asking us, uh, you know, uh, what if I'm, I'm a technology company, but I'm not necessarily going to be, uh, you know, like immigrating to Canada or what if I'm more like a traditional company, I don't have IP and I still need to immigrate to, uh, sorry, open a business in Canada. So that, that's why this program started. And finally, as part of the programs, we have the Elevate Talent Program. This is a cool program uh, that, you know, we've been doing this for like individually with our Eleven Talent for three years. Uh, we support, uh, you know, our community in Toronto and Ontario in general uh, to become experts in business development and marketing. So. This is a, sometimes the way for some, um, a, you know, people in the community uh, to get free training and then get match with a company so they get experience. So with Elevate Talent, we actually uh, got the opportunity to participate to do that uh, in a three months program. And right now we have open applications for the business strategy program, which is a free program uh, for people that are, uh, you know, entering into this. So I know that we have a question, Paulo, you can open up. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a project in partnership with another company, and we are thinking of joining forces to start a new company in Canada. Uh, it's possible to join the Latin program like this, or we need to open first a new company here in my country before we uh, apply to the process. And let me let me see if I understood. Do you have a company uh, that you are going to open a partnership? Is that correct? Uh, uh, we already had a, a tech companies. We and we made a. a a project with the other company that we like very much and we talk about the partners and we talk together with, and we think about to start a new company with this project mm -hmm. that's what is called a spin-off sometimes yeah yes. we receive a spin-off in the programs nice thank you okay no problem paulo uh, so yes, guys, so the Levy Talent uh, program is open and, and then, you know, you will find more information in here. Uh, we have uh, uh, questions, you know, no frequent questions that we normally get uh, into uh, our website. So you can always come here, you know, answer your questions. Uh, like there, there are too many here that, you know, are the most common ones. Hamed, uh, do you have a question? You can open up. <laughs> Yeah, hi Miriam. Uh, hi. I'm Hamed from Cropino. Uh, I trust you know me from uh, our emails before. 
Um, I, I have one more question. Uh, uh, that is, uh, is it possible to look for uh, any investors or venture capitals uh, during the acceleration phase? Is it possible for us uh, and uh, we can do it after the incorporating the company in Canada? Thank you. Hamed, that's a very good question. And, uh, you know, we always match companies with investors and we give the opportunities to open up to investors once they become a Canadian corporation and once they start to get some traction. Because, uh, you know, in Canada, many people assume this is kind of like the myth that you have from the US that you kind of pitch your company and people are going to give you a check. And this is not the case here, is even not the case in the US. Uh, so you have to have some traction and many times the first year is the most difficult year. Uh, so it's, this is why the government usually requests companies to have enough budget for the first year to operate. Um, so investors come to the table when you have already all your options gone. Like for example, there are too many grants in the market uh, for uh, startups. Uh, we have more than 100 grants for technology companies. This is free money from the government, either federal government, provincial government, you know, the, a local government. And they, they have this money for different reasons. Uh, let's say market research, hiring people, you know, different reasons that you can apply for grants. Um, why you will go to an investor when you actually can access free money? This is the mentality, this is how they think. You know, so we go and try to, uh, you know, go to the all options that we have before we actually reach an investors. And once you reach investors, you know, that, that are in our network, uh, you kind of have an opportunity to pitch, but you have to have a very good opportunity and very good, uh, you know, um, case. Uh, so you can start this conversation and it's kind of like a starting a relationship, right? So you have to go through the process to show why your company is good and all that. And we certainly coach that in, in phase three when they are in the accelerator program. So I hope that uh, you are going to meet investor, uh, investors from the beginning, but it will be more like a, our inner circle that are super close to us. They are just, you know, looking at your case. They are not looking at you to invest necessarily, but it is looking more like a for uh, uh, to mentor you. <laughs> that, that's kind of the case. Hope that answered the question. Really cool. Thank you very much. Okay, Thanks. no problem. Francisco, you have a question. Yeah, hi. Uh, Francisco here from Chile. Um, I've got a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is uh, for the startup program uh, yeah. going to phase one and two and then three. You have to be kind of a startup where you have like, where you're building kind of a product that mm -hmm. wants to scale up and stuff. Uh, I'm asking this because uh, I have a company in Chile Mm -hmm. And um, what we do is do is that we have like a lot of different products for different companies uh, with different kind of uh, um, objectives, but maybe they have kind of the same core thing uh, that we do for all of them. We've got this kind of uh, machine learning software that we use to build solutions for them and stuff. So uh, my question is if we can apply for this program like with that view, uh, because we don't have like this kind of uh, only program, only product, I, I, I mean, and uh, with that trying to scale it up. In fact, in Chile, we're growing fast. We've got, uh, uh, we got some sales. Uh, we are not like uh, on the level of the corporate uh, stuff, but we've got like these big sales too. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. And actually I'm living here in Canada this time. So it's kind oh, of nice. a perfect opportunity for us. Where so. are you in Canada? In Toronto. In Toronto, you should come yeah. and visit us <laughs> anytime. Great, great, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Uh, that's why I, I wanna, I, I arrived like two weeks ago. So I'm oh, trying nice. uh, at, at this time to figure this out. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, uh, answering your question, we have too mm -hmm. many cases like that. Usually the companies that are coming, uh, they have a very horizontal type of company, meaning that they tend to have a lot of services. Uh, so mm -hmm. when that happens, you know, that, that happens because the company tend to be mature in their country, but it's new here. And then, uh, you know, what we do with the companies that are coming with that situation is to, to start to look at one of the services, which of the services are going to do best in the market. Because oh, great. in Canada, uh, in, in particular, this is going to happen in Canada, in the US and Europe. 
is that they kind of come with an expertise. Uh, you know, we tend to be uh, like very multitasking in our emerging countries. Uh, you know, we do a lot of stuff at the same time, uh, but in here they like to see an expertise. So I love to put this example nor normally, like when you go out and you see the restaurants, you see restaurants like we are expert in ramen. They are not Japanese restaurant. They are expert in ramen, <laughs> Japanese ramen. You know, like mm -hmm. it, it's like an expertise because when you put in the menu too many things where people can be, a, you know, a little bit confusing. This, this is applicable for the companies when they come here. Uh, so you need to focus in which product or which service is going to do best at the beginning and get an expertise in that area. And then you can grow into the other verticals with, uh, you know, with the time. Uh, but other than that, it's like, that's, that's how it works. All right. And for, for that, uh, sorry, for that, uh, do I have to apply with this kind of expertise uh, stuff on the, for the market validation program? No, actually, or... when, when people come to the market validation and they come with the different services, there is when, uh, you know, we have an expert in our area that she, she's a market research person. And basically, uh, she does the work to start giving you information about competitors and giving you information about some other companies with similar services. So at the end of the program in market validation, you will decide, for example, which one is going to be uh, the service that you want to focus on. Okay, great. So I, I should apply and over, like over the way where we should like figure out uh, which service and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's okay, right. great. Now, guys, I, I, yeah, no problem. Um, again, uh, one particular note here is that we uh, we actually receive uh, it, the reason why we do these info sessions, and sometimes it's very difficult. And you, uh, I have to apologize sometimes that we are not able to answer all the questions, is because we get in between four to five emails per day inquiring about the programs, and we receive too many applications, uh, sometimes one or two per day. And uh, if you see the number of companies we have, uh, so we receive less than 10% of the companies that actually apply to the program. And uh, you know, the ones that get selected, for example, for interviews, because we have a few questions more to ask, and then you know, they get chances to get approved. Uh, but uh, just um, you know, try to go to the, to the uh, questions that are already here. If you don't find the information really, like uh, we are more than happy to answer, but unfortunately due to the level uh, of, uh, you know, emails that we get and applications we get, sometimes it's very difficult for us to actually uh, get back to you as fast as uh, you may wish. Uh, so if you have more questions, please ask, ask them now because we, we kind of, uh, you know, try to answer these questions now. So I'm going to finish up here uh, because later I'm going to give uh, the, um, heads up to, um, uh, to, to Samuel so he can continue with the events part. Uh, but uh, other than that is, uh, you know, I'm going to continue here with the about us. Um, this is important also for you to know, <laughs> uh, you know, who is a part of the LATAM startups uh, community. So we have a group of board of directors. Uh, this, these people are the best people I, I know in the ecosystem that are supporting our community. Valerie Fox, for example, is the person that created DMC Ryerson, which is the number one business incubator in the world, linked with university. She's part of our board of directors. Peter Elkins and Marcus Schrader are both investors in different areas. Marcus is more in life science and Peter Elkins is more like an incorporate uh, type of and social investment. Uh, Rafael Pinto, he used to work uh, with the American state organizations in Washington. He has had a diplomatic life most of his life. He's, he has extremely good connections all through Latin America and some other countries. Catherine Rose uh, is a person that has more than 20 years experience working with incubators and accelerators in Canada. And she has been work, uh, has worked, uh, sorry, with uh, the city of Toronto in particular with the uh, program Enterprise Toronto. She has seen a lot of startups, uh, all the cases that you can imagine. Michael Kennedy, uh, he works uh, with CIBC, which is one of the largest banks that we have in Canada. And he is part of the investment portfolio of that bank. 
So he's a lot of focus sometimes in financial, uh, financial type of companies that are coming to Canada. He's also fluent in Spanish and Portuguese. Uh, this is our team so far, although we are kind of hiring uh, three more people in the next days. Uh, so Luisa is our uh, project manager. She's the one that put, puts together sometimes in meetings with the startups. Uh, you can link uh, with her in LinkedIn. Uh, Samuel is here, so he's going to speak in a few minutes. Uh, we have uh, Jordana, she is our administrative assistant. She gets all the paperwork done, invoices done. So she's all about the administrative part of the company. Uh, we also have uh, Vino, he's our marketing assistant. He actually worked with the startups in phase one and phase two. He's the one that prepares with you the marketing strategies. Uh, he also prepares the focus groups for many people. Charmaine is the person that does the market research. She actually, uh, you know, get to know uh, competitors, gives you the SWOT analysis and all that. So she's, uh, you know, working with companies in phase one and phase two as well. Carol uh, is the person that, uh, you know, makes sure that you are having a good experience with our community. She's, she's customer experience. She uh, match also companies with mentors and make sure, you know, uh, milestones are meeting, uh, you know, uh, in all over the program. And then Cameron is another market research intern that we have. He's more working right now in our white papers for the upcoming uh, uh, events that we have when we are going to release white papers about uh, Latin American markets. Uh, you also he uh, see here our mentors and partners. Uh, they are amazing people. Uh, you know, like uh, we have more mentors than this, but let's say these are our main mentors, our core mentors uh, uh, for the companies. They are all in different areas in communication, legal, uh, corporation, uh, immigration, uh, investment, uh, you know, other programs, financial. It's like we have a variety of mentors that are extremely uh, uh, well uh, trained, uh, you know, and they, 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 own, they own their own company sometimes. So they know your journey and they have worked with different startups as well. So I want to pass the word to uh, Samuel now, so he can talk about events. So you, you let me know, Samuel, if you want me to go to the events page now. Okay. Done. Alrighty, everyone. Um, as Miriam said, I am Samuel, and I'm helping out Let Him Start the Marketing. And I uh, just wanted to highlight some upcoming events. And the one coming most recently is Mexico in the Spotlights, uh, which is coming July 28th. The purpose of this series of events, you know, um, we do this every two years. As Miriam said, we research in depth about the emerging markets of Latin America, and given that that is where Latin Stars roots um, are, are from. Um, and, you know, with our network from Latin America, we do our research and provide white paper, and we do that presentation through these virtual meetups where we bring a panel of experts of each country and also, you know, have a time of networking. Um, and with the end goal of, you know, learning more about the economy, um, uh, so for international startups, right, Mexico could be your next potential market, um, as well as for Canadian startups, if you're looking to, to grow an international client base, uh, Mexico is definitely a high potential emerging market. So uh, Mexico in the spotlight, that's coming up July 28th. Uh, we have uh, five other uh, in the spotlight events coming and um, in August, that would be Colombia, September, Chile, October, Brazil. Uh, November, Peru, and then December, Argentina, and Uruguay. And you'll find more information about these events on all our social media. Um, so stay tuned, uh, register. It's a free event and hope to see you all there. Yeah, so thank you so much, Samuel, for that. So Samuel is the one that uh, sends all the communications and marketing newsletter and all that. So uh, you will see him very active in social media always. Uh, so finally, guys, if you want to know about the type of startups we have, you can research in our clients, uh, you know, website, you will see, you know, the type of companies we have had in the past, uh, either the ones that are in the visa program, the ones that became a part of the phase two, which is market entry. Uh, we don't put phase one here because then, you know, those are the companies that didn't uh, necessarily open business in Canada, but they, they most of them have a really good experience. We, we get to know them very well. And uh, also, if you want to know news about our community, uh, we uh, constantly post blogs here about who's raising money, uh, you know, what is going on with our startups. Uh, we have a lot of news just recently 
as uh, particularly this year has been an amazing year for our community and uh, we are growing extremely fast. Uh, so I think that's it for now. I'm not sure if anyone has any other questions. Uh, if you can open your microphone or raise your hand, I will answer any other questions you may have right now. Okay, guys, uh, Francisco, you have another question? Yeah, sorry. Uh, is no there any chance that uh, I can get like a meeting or on the physical place? Yes, uh, especially when uh, since you are here or a in visit Toronto, or something. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and since you are here in Toronto, if you are thinking in applying, you know, you can send your application, and for example, interviews can happen in person. Uh, so if you right. send the application, we can uh, actually set up the interview in person. If it's just meeting right. the office and all that, uh, we go every Wednesday, but I have to say we normally get really packed today. So you will have to be communicating with our project manager, with Luisa, and she will uh, see which space is. But uh, we normally, you know, meet with people that have a specific goal in place and we ask where, you know, people to please read all the information so we are not wasting their time uh, and going to the mm -hmm. office just because, uh, you know, but other than that, yeah, we are always happy to receive people. Great, thank you. No problem. <laughs> Any other question, guys? If there is no other question, then I will finish the presentation here. Thank you so much for coming and uh, the video recording is going to be available in our YouTube channel. And uh, we are going to send it also uh, through, uh, you know, uh, the event, uh, Eventbrite. So you will get a copy of uh, this recording in case that you need it. Thank you so much for being here today and um, hope to see you either in our events or programs. Bye now. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.